Oke, okay. kita nama. <laughs> kita nama. Um, when you ask that question, you're actually invoking two things. The first one is this is what you ask when you court someone. Diba, Murad, this is the conclusion. Kita na ba git? Kita na ba? And the second one is, kita na ba? Address to us collectively. Meaning, kita na ba as a generation. So those are the two things that I will share to you this afternoon. Relationship and us as a group, as a collective. Now, let's begin with the first one. Relationships. We all have relationships, right? And not necessarily romantic relationships, but relationship with your friends, with your ex, with your teacher, with your parent, with your barcada, we all have relationships. And we invest so much time and energy and emotions to these relationships because they are real and these people are very important. Correct? But sorry to disappoint you guys, but this, this afternoon, I'll not be talking about that kind of relationship. I'm going to talk about relationship that is something that you experience every day, but you do not really see it. It's a concept. It's an imagination. It's impersonal. This is the relationship between you and the community as represented by this institution called government. So that's the thing that I'll talk about this afternoon. Now, um, you may ask, why do we have to talk about this? Number one, because I understand all of you are student leaders here, right? Maybe. You are active student organization leaders. And most of you. And you chose to be here to listen to people, to share ideas. Um, that's an indicator that you guys are a little above the ordinary youth. You know what I mean? Because you have maybe the sensitivity to understand the demands of the community. At the same time, you have the skill set that can address those things. So I think um, these things are very important to you. Second is, this is based on research. That if you want to expect a better quality of life in any community, you know what is the determining factor? It's not so much of religion, culture, geography. It's not. It is the quality of public institutions. Government matters. So that is why we have to talk about this. Now, you may ask, why do you relate that to a relationship? Because if you think about it, when you have, when you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, there's a, you always have give and take, right? That's really the denominator of a relationship. Somebody gives, somebody takes. In your relationship with the government, it's the same thing. What do you mean? As a citizen, you have certain obligations. And governments have certain obligations. You derive benefit from government, at the same time government derives benefit from you in the form of success. So it's a relationship. Now, in a, like any other relationship, there comes a time that you guys, you know, I help you, or your relationship is strained because you don't communicate that often, right? When trust evaporates, then you know, there's no point in having the relationship, right? Like in real relationships, when relationships fail, there, generally somebody gets it. Do you agree? But if you relate that to our topic this afternoon, if a relationship with the state or with the government fails, I also argue that is also hurtful. What do you mean? When you disengage, nobody cares, nobody checks people in power. Slowly, it can weaken the institution, it can breed corruption, and corruption and inefficiency will ultimately lead to poverty. And that is a proven thing. And poverty, by the way, is something that gets people into trouble. It hurts people. Right. And I also argue, in another perspective, this. When you're in a relationship, time over emotional intensity. Okay. You know, this is the normal, typical stage. You get to know, almost there, then, the climax is when you guys are officially together. So there is a label. So no, 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 paasa. Officially. So that's the height of your emotional intensity. Then you know love. But you know, feelings fade away. And the next stage is that you have to force. No, not force. But you have to decide that we have to be in a relationship. Right? Because you know, the feelings fade away. Or eventually it may deteriorate to a pull-off period. 
That's the same thing about our government. Next slide. The same intensity we have. Before our, before our election, you know, the, 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 the feeling steams up, grows, and then the culmination, I guess, is the election day. When, you know, you officially select your preferred candidate. You vote. And then, that's very noisy, diba? Have you experienced that? Like, away kung sa friends because of election issues, concerns, your preferences? The same thing, emotional intensity. But after, you know, oh, they won, very good, yay, wow, honeymoon period comes in. Eventually go back to our normal selves, our normal selves, our normal lives, private lives, and then they just left involvement to the experts. And I argue that this is something fundamentally wrong about our society. Because we equate democracy with just elections. And I argue that elections is just part of the process. The most important thing in our democratic process is what happens after we vote people and put them in power. It's the daily governance that will really have an impact in the lives of people. Right? So the challenge, therefore, is this entire period here. How do we, therefore, strengthen our relationship as citizens and government? That's the question. Next slide. Okay. And there are so many answers. But one thing that I think you can relate is that you can involve in this governance process as youth organizations. There's so many other ways. You can be an activist, you can be a journalist, you can be a political leader yourself, but as youth, this is something that you can relate, as youth organizations. Because number one, you're very organized, you're creative, you're mobile, idealistic, and most often than that, you're politically neutral. You're not organized for a political cause, but you have specific interests, right? So typically, a youth organization does these things. You organize events, correct? Manage projects, right? And you deliver services like the student government or whatever organization that you might belong to. But there is this area where I think it's a frontier area where only a little or a small group of organizations engage. And this is representation. Ooh, representation. What is representation? Simply put, representation is you utilize your organization to amplify public issues. Simple as, as that. Use your organizations to amplify public concern. And often than not, organizations don't want to engage in this area. Next slide. Now, in, a sto in the story that I'll share to you, it's really a story that happened in Tagayan, Dura City. We, during the, after the elections, we, we, a group of idealistic young people gathered all the youth organizations in the city, the most active, formed a council, and then we hope to articulate this development agenda the blueprint of our engagement. That's what we did. And once we constituted that council, we have it recognized by the city administration. And then the best and I think neat feature about this council is that the youth leaders that were elected in the council gets to have a seat. Imagine that, a seat in the city committees. And they have a voice. Next slide. <clears throat> Basically, this is what they did. They can, in the long run, they can advocate for policy changes. In the short route, they can account um, basic government services. One very clear example is we have this organization in, in the city whose, you know, which is, its ordinary operation includes going to the house of the uh, a house that caters with children in conflict with the law. We call it Boys Town. And what they do is they give um, Counseling session, personality development sessions, that's what, that's what they do regularly, okay? But because, because of their involvement in that council, they were appointed a seat in the committee that creates the policy that manages these institutions. So, can you imagine how the difference? From a outsider just giving aid, they become part of the policy-making process. That's a level up engagement. And second, what they are doing now is they are evaluating police stations if they're following the protocol <coughs> in handling children in conflict with the law. And that is another level up. From an ordinary organization that is just simple counseling work, we are already changing policy. This is another example of a youth organization doing a difference in terms of policy making. These are 
leaders of the different colleges in Camila New York City, and they proposed a piece of legislation, Students' Rights and Welfare Ordinance. Because in the city, we have around more than 10 colleges. Only one school has a Magna Carta of Students' Rights. So this is now in the committee level of the city council. Next. Now, this is very interesting. We have a new bridge in the city, just constructed uh, a, a year ago. And this is one very interesting structure. I think this is common to different bridges around the country. Now, you the sun, it's supposed to be a sun, a ray of a sun. It's a symbol, but look at it. It was placed on top of a, of a pedestrian sidewalk. So people have to go down the street and then, you know, it's... And they really just built that. And I get to Another situation, this is a pedestrian lane. And there's, if you can see, there's wires blocking the pedestrian lane. You see that? You might, start, you might think it is funny, yeah? it's really, really dangerous. What we did is simple. Through the organizations, we wrote a letter, we made noise in social media, and a week after, this was removed, this was removed. Simply because we utilize the power of social media. At the end, this is the message that we want to share to everyone. I think it is high time for us to change our mindset that we are just clients of government. Okay. From clients, meaning we should not be passive observers. Democracy is not a spectator sport. If you want, to expect better outcomes, if you want to expect a better quality of life, you have to involve yourself in the process. And youth organizations are potent forces because you are organized, well-networked, noisy. And our generation is, I think, the most important generation. This is statistics, huh? Our age bracket is one-third of the entire population. One-third. That's the biggest age bracket in the history of the Philippine population demographics. Kita pinakanaghan, our age bracket, from 18 to 30. And if we just utilize the power to influence the policy-making processes of our city, our barangay, or the entire country, then I think we're making an impact that will last more than our lifetime. So I ask you, kita na ba as a generation? Thank you and good afternoon.